way better than Nick Saban or Urban Meyer. I'll take Utah, and I'll take Michigan State. Michigan State's another great bowl team. They've won five of six. With that, we go to a guy who played in this league for a decade and a half, a Pro Bowl or Super Bowl winner via the Coward Global Satellite Network, Trent Dilfer. All right, um, I look to you for wisdom on these Mondays. Brady's decline. Now, I don't want to overreact to it, but we got 40-year-old guy. Gronk and Edelman are past the prime. I mean, Gronk's perhaps in his last year. Do you see light at the end of the tunnel for New England rest of the year? I actually do, and I also see all the things that have been talked about. It doesn't look right. Uh, they look older than they have in the past. They look slower than they have in the past. Um, but I also think they've also gone through a change schematically. They, I, I believe they entered this season um, really trying to go old school with their offense. And it fit their personnel at the time. Big offensive linemen, some of the biggest offensive linemen they've had in a long time. A new running back, multiple running backs, but a new guy in Sony Michelle that's a really young, a good young player. Um, not sure what was going to happen at the, at the wide receiver's posi position outside the numbers especially. So they tried to play a ball control, slow the game down, play the personnel, and mainly protect their defense offense. And it hasn't worked when it doesn't really fit what Tom Brady does best. Can he do it? Absolutely. And there's times he looks spectacular doing it. But what he does best and where I think they will go here for the next two weeks and into the playoffs is more of their old spread up-tempo offense where they spread you boundary to boundary with running backs, tight ends displaced outside receivers and create more space. And when you do that, it does a couple things. It's what makes them best. One, it gives Gronk more room to work with. It takes advantage of his size uh, more than pl playing him in a scrum. It allows James White to be much more involved in the offense. And what happens there is more run after catch. It allows Edelman to work the middle of the field without help defenders, where he's great one-on-one. -on -one. And, and what I think it will do is it'll allow Josh Gordon now to be the explosive guy. It'll move from Gronk being the guy that used to go to explosive plays with to Gordon. And they can move him now that he's integrated in the offense from the perimeter inside, which you saw the Steelers do yesterday with Antonio Brown, where they lined him up in the tight end position or the slot position to create big plays. I think if they go spread, what you'll see is these older guys now take advantage of what they do best, use their brains, use decision-making, use the space on the field, and just say, hey, we're willing to get into shootouts. Uh, and I'll take the Patriots in that situation. Yeah, more James White, less Sony Michelle, perhaps. Okay, Rams. Are the yes. are the Rams fools gold? I think they're fools gold because nobody else is great. Again, they have massive holes. They, they're terrible against the run. Those two great interior defensive linemen, all they care about is hitting the quarterback. They're out of position all the time. The linebacker level isn't stout. They get bullied around. Uh, the secondary is getting run by. I see all the same stuff. At the same time, they have difference makers on defense. And if they play well offensively and they get ahead of you, then those difference makers um, can really have an impact. Offensively, they're obviously in a funk. But I give Sean McVay a lot of credit. And I think he'll be a lot like Bill Belichick and the other great coaches in this league. They'll do a great self-scout this week. And they'll go back six, seven, eight weeks. And they'll look at trends, what's made them good, what's made them bad. And they'll start morphing their offense back into what the players do best, and I think the Rams can make a run just be because they're that explosive offensively. By the way, I, the, the two teams that, that kind of look the same to me are the Cowboys and the Bears, where most of their top yeah. most of their top players are on defense. In fact, I think Pro Football Focus has the Bears' eight best players on defense, and they have quarterbacks that we've briefly elevated, but I think Dak and Trubisky have low ceilings. I mm -hmm. think the Bears and Cowboys are the same team. What say you? I'd add the Ravens to that mix, too. I think there's buckets right now. I think depending on what happens tonight, tonight there's a chance for the Saints to just distance themselves and put their flag in the ground and say we're the only great team in football. If they can do that, then I'd put a bathtub full of teams that could possibly make a run. And then within that bathtub, there's two different buckets. There's the high ceiling, low floor buckets. There's your Chiefs. There's your Rams. There's some of those teams. There's your low ceiling, high floor teams. Those are your Cowboys, Ravens, Bears. I totally agree with you. Um, but right now, nobody's great in the NFL. Everybody has massive holes, not just holes. And we've talked about this, I think, every week. That's what happens when you're paying your quarterback $25 million. Just not enough money to spread around to have quality depth. Um, but I, I think the other thing that's going on, too, is there's not a head coach 
in this league that on a Monday afternoon as they're watching films or Tuesdays or game planning going, oh, we got this one. We know we're better than the team we're playing. I mean, Pete Carroll had to play the Niners this week, and you think the Seahawks are way better than the Niners. I guarantee you Pete Carroll is like, oh, my gosh, I can see 10 ways we can lose this game. Yeah. To say, you know, every coach is looking at us like we're not that good. We have to play a very particular way, a very specific way in order to win. And if we get outside of that formula, we can be in trouble. Explain to me, Michael Vick did earlier. Um, I love Carson Wentz, and I think Nick Foles is a world-class, best backup in the league with Jacoby Brissett. That's what I think he is. Maybe I'm wrong. But when Foles plays and Wentz sits, Alshon Jeffrey's better. Like, like what? <laughs> what's going on with Philadelphia? I think this is a common trend I've seen for years now. What happens is coaches naturally rely too much on their superstar quarterback. There's a natural laziness that goes into the week of preparation. And the conversations go something like this. Do we want to work another two hours on trying to figure out five to eight scheme-driven plays that can give us some free offense? Or do we just want to trust our dude? Because our dude comes through all the time, whether he's Andrew Luck, Carson Wentz, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, yada, 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 yada. And they stop it. Let's just trust our dude. He'll make plays. We need him to make plays. And then the backup comes in. They're like, whoa, we have to help this guy. We have to do a lot of stuff offensively to get others involved and really help him out. This has to be a coach-driven game more than a quarterback-driven game. The problem I have with that is that if you go to Bill Walsh, Bill Walsh treated Joe Montana and Steve Young exactly the same. He was still going to try to help them. Mike Martz, no matter who his quarterback was, was always going to search and grind to find the best schemes and help them. And I think what happens too often is we think these quarterbacks, I've used this a million times, I'll use it again, have Superman capes on. Like they literally can do anything. And what they'll all tell you is, no, we'd love some help. We'd love 10 freebies a game. We'd love you some coach-centric offense to make our job a little bit easier. But sometimes that doesn't happen. So when Nick Foles comes in, all of a sudden, I'm watching them do some stuff schematically. Like, well, I haven't seen that the last few weeks. No wonder guys are getting wide open. Imagine if they did that when they had Carson Wentz. Trent Dill for a decade and a half in the NFL, Pro Bowl, Super Bowl. Um, my coach of the year is Matt Nagy. I think he's doing more offensively with less. Sean McVay's doing some cool stuff, but he's got more to work with. Uh, I think they're a great story. But let's talk about Green Bay that lost 0-7 on the road this year. Uh, yesterday, Aaron got nicked up a little. 35 years old, been last couple of years banged up. He's now very expensive. If I said to you, next five years for Aaron Rodgers, what are they going to look like, Trent? Depends who comes in there. And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. This has to be a strong person now. This has to be somebody that's going to come in and say, you know, Aaron, we're going to do everything we can to help you. Uh, we're going to make this more quarterback friendly. Uh, we're going to work our butts off because you can have success. Uh, but you're going to play the game our way. And you're going to do this our way. Um, this has to be a staff that comes in and earns his respect, but at the same time demands and pulls a ton out of him. Um, there's so much more in the tank than what we're seeing from Aaron Rodgers. Uh, it has truly become a frenetic sandbox type offense. He doesn't look comfortable. He doesn't trust the people around him. He doesn't trust his scheme. Uh, this needs to look a lot more like the Kansas City Chiefs and Chicago Bears then it does what you're watching right now. By the way, you, you said this to me in a text about two, two, three months ago. Man, the Chargers are good, aren't they? Holy, yeah. Trent, backs, receivers, corners. Are they good enough to win the Super Bowl not having a home game? If they're healthy, they're just so nicked up and they got to get healthy. Imagine if they get all these pieces together. Keenan Allen with the hit pointer now. They've missed four in the last couple of weeks. But yeah, they have depth at the skill position offensively on the offensive line, they're way more physical. And that's what I saw early in the year. They're way more physical than they've ever been. And Philip is making better decisions. He's processing faster. Philip was always the guy that read everything deep to short. I mean, he was always looking to pull out the machete on every play. And now he's pulling out the scalpel. Now he's willing to go into death by a thousand cuts and just nick you to death. And his decision-making, if he can maintain that, and it slipped a little bit the other night, but if he can maintain that high level of decision making with the offensive talent they have, and again, a defense that has a difference maker at all three levels defensive front, the linebacker position, and now the secondary position with Derwin James, 
You don't have to be great on defense. You just have to have enough difference makers that make big plays at big times. Yeah, and it, it, it is a bizarre story where they don't really have a true home field advantage. Trent Dilfer, great yeah. talking to you, bud. Thanks, brother. All right, good stuff. Sean Merriman, outspoken, going to join us last hour of the show. Plus, we do the three word game in the NFL. I can describe every NFL outcome in three words, including the one I did not watch. I had I have to pick a game every week I didn't watch. I picked one this weekend, and I haven't talked about it because I didn't watch it, and I'm not going to pretend I did. Uh, special people in your life, show them how much you appreciate them. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com, code HERD, 1-800-Flowers.com, code HERD. Get 12 holiday lights roses for $29.99, another dozen, and a vase free. Hour three next. XL guys aren't built like everyone else. That's why TXL isn't built like any other clothing store. With sizes starting at XL, from Lacoste to Levi's, Brooks Brothers, and more. Built to fit. Built XL. TXL. I'm a thousand miles from nowhere, and there's no place I'd rather be.